All right, in today's video, a beginner's introduction to Python list comprehensions. So what you need to know as a beginner Python developer is that list comprehensions are essential. It's absolutely necessary. You need to have this down. And what I mean by a list comprehension is, let's just say we had some numbers, uh, let's call it one, two, three. So how would you multiply these numbers by two and return a new list of two, four, six? Well, the easiest, best, most Pythonic way is to use a list comprehension. So we start off with our square brackets and we would do i times two for i in nums. And that is your basic list comprehension. That's what we're gonna be talking about today and I promise you are gonna learn something even if you're already a pretty experienced Python developer. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that I have a full course on list comprehensions. This is the most detailed course out there. Right now I have 17 videos and I'm going to be adding more. And this is all available for free, different aspects of Python list comprehensions, exception handling, unused variables, um, etc. So please check out the full playlist, please support. And yeah, this is going to be a fun one. Intro to Python list comprehensions, please stay tuned. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is when to use a Python list comprehension. And the example I have here is a traditional for loop. And any, any software developer, any programmer in any language will be familiar with for loops. And this is how a Python for loop works. And so what we've done is we've initiated an empty list. And then we are, we're looping over our values, in this case numbers one through six, so we're looping over our values and then we're multiplying the values by two and then we're appending that value to our results. So I can even add a print in here if you wanna see things as the iteration goes along. And we're gonna run this and take a look. So you know we're, we're iterating over our for loop. We have two, four, six, etc., And then the results are returned two, four, six in our new list results. So that's a traditional for loop. And this is good, all good and fine, but the problem is it's just very long. It's taking us four or five lines just to do a simple for loop. And this is something that we can actually accomplish in one line with a list comprehension. So let's run this exact same scenario with a list comprehension. So I'll comment this out, um, switch this to times two, and we can run this again. And with, we get the exact same result, two, four, six, et cetera. And I'll actually change this to three, just so you can see that it is the list comprehension doing the work. And now we get three, six, nine, et cetera. So this is our list comprehension. It's a one-liner, and we've reduced four lines of code to one line, and probably made it more readable, and probably made it faster and more performant as well. Now for our next example, let's do the same kind of thing, but with strings. So our first example was with integers. Now let's do one with strings just for fun. Um, so we'll comment this out. I'll take my print statement and we're going to throw it down here and uncomment again, a traditional for loop, except this time the for loop is dealing with strings. So what we're gonna do here is with our strings, uh, intro to list comps, we're going to change that to uppercase. And you can see the dot upper here is going to change things to uppercase. So we'll run this and our results intro to list comps uh, with all uppercase letters. And again, um, you know, this is a traditional for loop and it took four lines to do. We initiated our empty list. Um, we, you know, manipulated our, our I variable and then we've appended those I's to our results. So that's our traditional for loop. And again, we can do all that same thing with a list comprehension. So I'll comment out the for loop. Now we have our list comprehension and we can run it again and we have intro to list comps. And I guess just so you can see that it is the list comp doing the work, uh, we can add something to it. Uh, let's just say, hey. <laughs> and then so we can run this again and we got intro, hey, to, hey, list, hey, etc. So you can tell that it is the list comprehension doing all the work that this four lines of code was doing, but on one line. So more Pythonic, probably faster, easier to read. Um, this is the way you wanna do it with a list comprehension instead of a for loop. 
All right, so now that we've looked at a couple examples, one using integers and one using strings, what I wanna do is just take a step back and go over what are the key features of a list comprehension? What makes a list comprehension a list comprehension? And the key feature, first of all, is that it returns a list. So we have our square brackets. And you know, if you're a little more advanced, you might know that there's other comprehensions out there um, using set comprehensions or dictionary comprehensions, things like that. But for this video, we have our dictionary comprehension, we have square brackets. And inside it is also a couple key pieces. The first part is the expression. And what I mean by the expression is the I times two, or maybe it's the I dot upper from our previous example. So here's our expression, I times two for I in iterable. And the iterable is the other key feature of a list comprehension. You need an iterable. You need something to iterate over or to loop over. And there's a lot of different things that can be iterables in Python. Uh, the main ones, or the first ones you're gonna see are lists and strings. <clears throat> so for a list, um, before you know we did our variable nums, but it doesn't have to be a variable, we can just throw a list in here just like that. So here is our 246 again. Um, we have our iterable, we have our expression, and we have our, people, some people call this the member or the value, just the thing that you're iterating over. And so again, the iterable and the expression are the key part, and it's always going to have for and it's always going to have in. So the values are going to change, of course, one, two, four, it doesn't matter what the value is. Um, doesn't matter what the expression is. These things are going to change. You can even just have I, and that's still kind of considered an expression, even though you're not doing much, but that's still an expression. And the key piece is that there's always going to be the for in. So I hope that makes sense. Um, leave a comment below, send me a message if you want to learn more, but those are kind of the building blocks of a simple list comprehension. So now let's go back to our examples and I want to show you one or two more things. So what we're going to do is create a little function here. And in this case, I created one called times five and it's going to take a number and it's going to multiply that by five. And actually I'll just show you what that would look like in a for loop first as well. So I'm kind of doing this on the fly and that'll be good too because then you can kind of see uh, how I think about things. So first we have our nums. So we're iterating over our nums and we'll do i equals times five i. And we can even add a print here and see what's going on with our i value. And then we append it to our results and then I'm going to want to print out our results. So here's our results, like with function, <laughs> okay? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna save it, we're gonna run it. And first, of course, you can see all those iterations, and then you can see our results, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So we've taken every number from up here, from our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we've used a function to multiply those by five and append those to a new list. So that's how you would do it with a traditional for loop. And what I want to show you guys is that you can do that same thing with a list comprehension. We can use functions inside our list comprehension. So we have our nums here. Uh, that's our iterable again that we're iterating over. Our iterable here is nums. And then this is our expression times five i. And I'm, I'm going to have to rename this results. I'm also going to comment this out and we're going to run this again and we get our results again 5 10 15 20 etc and you know we can rename this we could call it times 6 and multiply things by 6 um, just make sure to change the function name times 6 Ooh, times 6 um, so we rename our function we run it again and again 6 12 18 etc so I hope that makes sense that we are using a function inside our list comprehension. And of course, this is just an intro video. I'm just trying to give you a taste for some of the things that you can do. Um, you know, I have a whole, again, a whole video series and you're gonna learn a lot more about uh, list comprehensions as you progress through the series. 
but just know that there's a lot deeper that you can take this. There's a lot more complicated that it can get, but in a good way. So you could do something like if i greater than two, right? And so since we have some numbers that are less than two, when we go to run this, um, some of those numbers aren't going to make it through our iteration. And that would be the exact same thing as if we did if i greater than two here, um, add a if statement to our traditional for loop, change this to times six again, of course, and we can run this again and see the iteration, see our 18, 24, 30, 36, and that's returning things. And so this, and again, look, so as we start adding if statements, as we start making our for loops more and more complicated, um, so now we're up to five, six lines of code, and it's still on one line in our list comprehension. So I hope this is starting to make sense that as you, you know, as your for loops get bigger and more complicated, you can just do that on one line in a list comprehension, and it's arguably more readable, it's more Pythonic, it's arguably faster and more performant. So that is a list comprehension. All right, time for our third and final example. So, so far we've gone over an example with integers and we've gone over an example with strings. And the next thing we're gonna do is do an example with a list of dictionaries. So this is a dictionary here. And what makes it a dictionary is the key value pair. So name is our key and John is our value in this dictionary. And what I wanna do is grab names from the dictionary, okay? Does that make sense? And so we're gonna use kind of our, first I'm gonna show you a traditional for loop and then we're gonna do the same thing with a list comprehension, right? We've done this before. So first we're going to use a for loop with our dix variable and then we're gonna have i name and that will append the names to our results. And then when we go to print out our results, we should get a list of the names. So we'll save this, we'll run it, and here's our results. Here's our names, John and Matt. Sweet, so this is a traditional for loop looping over a list of dictionaries. So now how would you do this same thing with a list comprehension? It'll be very intuitive if you've been following along throughout this video. So what we're gonna do, and first we're gonna comment out our for loop. What we're gonna do is switch this to our dict variable, and we're going to do i name for i in dix. And when we turn this, exact same result, we get John and Matt. And just so you know that we're getting our values here, I think I can append a string and I'll just say uh, Python. <laughs> And we'll run this again. And we got John Python, we got Matt Python. And so there you have it, uh, iterating over a list of dictionaries in a list comprehension. So, you know, just to, to kind of do a little bit of a conclusion here, uh, any iterable is going to work fine. Our iterable, again, in this case is dicts. And so we have our dictionaries iterable, or it could be our list of strings iterable, or our list of integers iterable. It is all good. Um, that is how flexible uh, Python list comprehensions are. It's really an essential building block for the Python developer. Um, I hope you learned something in this video, and thanks for watching. This has been Intro to Python List Comprehensions. Bye.